When we talk about two-dimensional space in math, we usually think of Cartesian coordinates, which are also called rectangular coordinates. These provide a convenient framework for us to use to talk about points and graphs on the plane. It's important to realize, though, that Cartesian coordinates aren't an inherent part of the plane. We can put them wherever we want to, so if there are features of the plane that we want to take into account, we can use any particularly convenient place for the origin and orientation for the axes. But rectangular coordinates aren't always the most convenient way to label the plane. Another useful way is the polar coordinate system. In this system, we still specify an origin, sometimes called the pole, and a polar axis, which is a ray emanating from the origin. We specify a point in the plane using two numbers, just as with rectangular coordinates, but their meanings are different. The first number in the pair is the distance between the point and the origin. The second number is the angle that this line segment makes with the polar axis. So this point is r theta, and for what it's worth, it's 3.75 pi over 5. It's 3.75 units from the origin, and the line segment connecting it to the origin forms an angle of pi over 5. The background grid for polar coordinates, what you could imagine being drawn on graph paper, is this. Let's note right away a significant difference between this system and rectangular coordinates. Here, points don't have unique representations. A rotation by an angle of 2 pi, for example, doesn't change the location of the point. A rotation of negative 2 pi doesn't change it either. The underlying idea behind the two systems is the same, though. We specify points as intersections of two specified paths. In rectangular coordinates, these paths are lines, one specified by an x value and the other by a y value. In polar coordinates, one of these paths is a circle and the other is a ray. Let's now graph two functions using polar coordinates. We'll start with r equals 1. The set of points satisfying this equation are those whose distance from the origin is 1. So the graph of this is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. Now let's graph theta equals 1, which involves an extra complication. From what we said before, the graph should be this. But nothing is said in the equation about r, so r should range over all of its possible values. And I lied a bit earlier when I said that r is a distance since we actually allow r to be negative, which corresponds to a ray pointing in the opposite direction from the one we just drew. So this part of the graph satisfies the given equation and has r greater than or equal to 0, while this part satisfies the given equation and has r less than or equal to 0. We'll talk more about graphing functions and polar coordinates in the next video.